so many of you told me that you love glue book collage, so I thought we should get on and do some. Today I'm filling a page in this increasingly chubby and rather eclectic glue book and I've wanted to do a video like this for, let's be honest, absolutely ages. I love tearing up those little bits of paper, mixing up the patterns, sticking them down, just having fun. I get lost in the process, I lose track of time and I wonder if you do too. But I didn't really know if you'd be interested in seeing my process and watching that. Is it really fun just seeing someone put glue on some paper and sticking it down? So I asked you and you said a resounding yes, we should definitely do it and have some fun together. So I'm going to suggest that we do this together, lay out your scraps, get your book pages, grab your glue, have some fun collaging with me today as I fill a page in my glue book and share five tips and ideas for how to collage easily. I'm going to fill a page in this book today and I thought I'd explain right at the beginning what the book is that I'm going to use. So I've filled quite a few pages already and I guess filling this was what gave me the idea of sharing the process with you and hopefully you'll collage along with me. So this is just a, an old school book that I rescued from a skip and I've just been enjoying adding gorgeous colours and patterns and pictures and gluing things down. It's so, so satisfying and so calming. So I'm going to fill a page in this, but I thought I'd just take a moment to suggest some other books that you might want to use, because you might not have a book like that. In the past, I have, well, quite a few years ago, I started with this, which was a kind of junk journal, I guess, and... I filled it with things that I glued in and painted. And my word, vibrant, is not the word. But I really enjoyed it. And it's part of my journey. And maybe you have a journey going from one style and learning and enjoying things to another. We evolve, don't we? So this was one glue book. And another form of book you might want to use is an old book. So you could take an old book and alter it and and then use that to glue in. I like this one and I've enjoyed filling it with some pages but I feel like today I want something that is a bit bigger. So I'm going to do the page in that exercise book. Oh it's just so so much fun adding adding sticking and gluing. So I'll take a page from here and I thought I'd take my time today and fill a page with you with a prompt. So the idea is that today we set up what might be something that's monthly. If you enjoy it, let me know if this is something that you want to do. Take our time and collage together, that's the idea. And the idea is to make it really easy without having too many rules. I don't want rules. Life is full of rules and I don't want them at my craft desk. What I like to have are some guiding principles, some tips and ideas. So I've put a few down today and I'll illustrate these as we create a page in our glue book but we'll make it really simple and have some fun. The first tip is choosing a colour palette and I like to work with about three colours and I like one to be slightly more what I'm thinking of as a dominant feature colour. So I have two that are more background and something more that is a bit sharper maybe meant to be more at the front and today's prompt if we can use one is going to be neutrals so if you want to create a page in a glue book with me that would be absolutely fantastic I've chosen this neutral colour palette so these are the kind of papers let's just have a look these are the kind of papers that I've pulled out in my medium size medium size pieces just pulled out I've got lovely pale greens and brown dots and some yellows and some old digital and a piece of music paper and some William Shakespeare and pattern paper and just I didn't take too long pulling them out and I just put those set of neutrals maybe that's a feature um, put those in a wallet handily around me which means Along with some other items which I'll share, I've got a little bit of organisation going on in my desk. 
So first tip, choose a colour palette and obviously choose the book that you want to glue in and then we can have a, th a think about which other supplies we might sit around us to pull on really easily as we're putting together a page. So the other supplies I have around me, as well as these medium sized papers, are, well let's go for book pages. So one thing I did was just pull out a selection of book pages and to be frank the process involved a little bit of just walking around my craft room and tidying up a bit and that certainly helped. So I've got book pages with large font and you may not be able to see it but this was badly dyed so I had to go at I had to go at dyeing with a diluted acrylic paint actually and it's taken it away from being just pure white and I like that if that's our neutrals theme and I just grabbed a whole load of different contrasting types and styles. I've got a map page here, some beautiful old vintage book pages. I love having in a collage foreign languages and even better if the alphabet is in a, certainly a different style. I think I've got some German. So all sorts in here. Oh, contents page. Now contents page I think is really interesting in a collage. You have numbers and we've got Roman numerals and it looks a bit different from just regular text. I've clearly stamped on some Shakespeare script here. That's nice and yellowing. So you see I've got all sorts of different book pages and it's about variety and contrast as well. So in terms of organisation around me I had my beautiful rather coloured set of neutrals here, book pages and the third component of paper that I've got around me ready to pull apart is larger pieces. And these are my larger sheets, again sticking to that neutrals theme. So that's our prompt, doing something with neutrals. I've got some whole pages here and if I'm frank I'm always slightly loath to tear into a whole sheet. I like to be really careful with a budget, it's part of the game I play and that means sometimes I'm a bit hesitant about ripping up beautiful pages but sometimes when I've gone through all of the smaller pieces I do start to break into some of these larger sheets and it feels like such a treat. Now am I just deluding myself and living in a, a different world? Does it feel naughty? I feel a bit naughty when I'm ripping up beautiful sheets like that, that but I also just love it and that feeling gives me inspiration when I'm putting together my glue book page. So I've got large pages here. Let's just set those aside. I've got my book pages. I've got my smallish medium. And I've also got a selection of little items around me that will help to add features. So features and layers and special bits let's start with let's start with Tracy so a really important part of my life at my craft desk is this black box with a ton of Tracy labels and other bits and bobs so I've got plenty to hand ready to cut out if there's one let's get some out if there's one activity that stops my flow when I'm collaging it's if I have to stop and actually start cutting things out as I'm gluing so what I like to do is have a whole load of these already cut out. I think I've got a little bit of shabby dabby doo -dah mixed in as well. But I've got labels and all sorts in that one. And I'll pull on that to add some detail. I've got, let's find Andrea. Andrea's sitting around here somewhere. In fact, I've got a bit more Tracy. This is more vintage style adverts. I like these because they have text on, really pretty and some beautiful images that I've used in collage cards. I've got a book that I've chosen in case I need some extra sheets. Gorgeous, vintage, beautiful, nice font, lovely to rip up. It's got some lovely pictures in as well which will get used. I pulled out my text stamp, my postmark stamps. If I want to I might use a splodge of gold paint, who knows. A stamp here with dates. I think it only goes up to 1999 which shows its age. I've got my mica powder and I picked a couple of different colours and made those into a spray. 
So that's my spray that I've made up. So I've also got some Artie Mays items in a little container here. May not use butterflies today, really like that bird. There's just a few different things in here that I might, vintage ladies I might use. So I've got those handy. I've got a paintbrush for doing a little bit of dabbling later and one of my favourite stamps. So tip number two is organise your supplies and have a variety of these things if you can on your desk around you or sometimes if I'm honest they sit on the floor near my chair when I don't have enough desk space. Let's be honest non none of us have enough space do we? We all need a little bit more. So let's get going on filling a page and then we can just have a chat about some of these other tips and ideas. One other key supply that I do need to share is my Bursting to the Seams Scrappy Neutrals box. And whenever I have a project where I have something extra and it's in that neutral family, but it's just a small piece, I push it in here. So we really do have a complete mix of items, some corrugated card, some sort of crinkly paper here. I think that came in Happy Mail, that's gorgeous. I've got book pages that I've had a go at painting and scribbling on. Most importantly in here I think I've got either an old envelope or packaging. But it's just the most glorious mix of all sorts. And I find it's easy to, let's say, file things in here. And they just get pushed in and it means that I've got something to draw on as mats and layers. So this is one of my happy boxes. Look at that. Yep, it's always full and I have to say, however much I use it, it never gets empty. I don't know if you have something like this. What do you do with all your scrappy bits? Do they go in little plastic tubs like these? Or do you have some kind of envelope system? It'd be interesting to know what you do with these naughty little pieces that are ever so difficult to tame. What I'm going to do is pull on this to start the page. So let's just find the page in here. And I'm going to begin by creating some layers. I'll do one side. I won't do both sides. I'm going to do one side here. And my process today is going to be a tiny bit different from when I create maybe a journal cover. Let's just let's just share, try and explain what I'm saying. So when I create something like this, whether it's on a large scale or a small scale, so this was a jolly big folio, the idea was that there was a cohesive picture across all of this. And I started by putting, I think, the corners in and then I worked in. But and I also made sure I had images in specific places, spreading them out a bit with balance so that it all worked as a single item. But the idea of my, my glue book is to make life a lot more simple and easy. And my thought process as I put this together, therefore, is a little bit different. Let's get, let's get something on. Ooh. I don't know if you can see. This has got spray on because it's been in my splat box. Let's just rip a bit up. So my process for a glue book page is to not worry about having those rules where you think about where your focal point goes. If I want to have something that's a bit more of a structured process, I'm happy to do it. But glue booking for me, or at least in this glue book and this process, is more about creating a landscape. I've got a relatively watery glue here so I'm not using a Pritt stick it's a bit quicker this way. My, my thought is create a landscape on a page, make the whole process something that is very easy and therefore relaxing without too much concentration. It removes the sense that we can get it wrong because the more rules we have the more we're thinking have I got it right and I just don't want to do that. So the idea with this glue book is I will use the pages to create things and add to other journal pages. So yes, it, it is going to have a purpose. I'm going to use it. So when I put together the pages in my Junk Journal July journal, I used a piece, let's see if I can remember where, on a pocket to decorate it. 
she said, hopefully. Oh dear. My brain isn't, it just doesn't work the same way these days. Any sympathy with that? Do you know what I mean? Let's find it. There we go. So I had a fairly plain pocket here. And what I did was I tore a page out of my glue book, cut it to size, and instantly I had something that I thought was really rich and lovely to look at there on the front of a pocket. And it would definitely have taken me quite a bit of time to just create a piece of decorative paper to put on top of a pocket, so it's great to have it handy. The other way that I've used some of these pages in the past, yum yum, is to tear a page out and then cut it into circles to use as closures on my various envelopey typey pockets. So I've got a piece of lovely brown paper down. It's always a good place to start. Brown paper complements so many other things. I'm going to just reach into this stack and start putting some stuff down. So I said I would go for neutrals, so let's do a bit of that. And my other tip, which I've used a few times in my various videos, is to put glue in the middle and avoid the edges. In fact, that might be one of the tips. Use a smart glue technique, centre first, edges later, so that we can tuck things under. So tick, we're doing number four already. And what I'm filling the page with, to begin with, is my layers. So I'm going to use background anchor pieces, create a middle, and then add some top. So let's just do that. Not as rules, just broad principles about what you might want to do. I quite like the idea of it being upright. Upright digitals, there. And we like, we like spots, but I don't like straight edges. I'll have a bit of that under there. I've already got quite a bit of busyness going on, so that's what's in my mind. Quite busy, so maybe I will tone it down. And as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing a lot of empty space here, so I'll add some extra middle layers too. Let's get some more background down. Nice bit of script. Can't go down the left here. So what is it about gluing and paper? And have you always done it? Is it something that latterly you've found and discovered? Or do you think it's always been there? Can you remember it in your childhood? So using the fact that I haven't put glue to the edge of this, I can lift it and put that down there. Quite like that already. And I can see this gorgeous chocolatey brown marrying up with the colour of the font here. Let's go for, this is a different shade, different shade there, i just have that. I don't mind if they pop out over the bottom, you can always trim it and maybe it doesn't matter, like that. So I definitely want to weave some book page in, so shall we have something, I've clearly stamped on this one, I think I'll have something up here, go for the corner, bring that over the top. Builds up very quickly, doesn't it? I feel like I want a bit more book page in here. So let's go to my oops. Let's go to the book page pack and pull out something from here. I quite like the map. I think that's too dark. So no, normally I would want something like this in it, but is it competing with that mat? Maybe not. Maybe actually. Maybe we'll have a bit of that. The map page and the large font. A bit of that. It's very easy to get a messy desk when we're collaging, isn't it? Carnage. Just 
in the middle. I think that can go under. So I've put that under there so that the raggledy taggledy edge here covers up my straight edge at the top of that book page. Okay. So I might have something over here, but there's too much white space here. Just reduce that, bring it down. I can add something, I like that a lot. I'm broadly in the neutrals. I've got some teal and I've got the pop of my chocolate spotty paper here. But I'm okay with this. So if your prompt is neutrals, I think we're, we're doing all right. And I'm wondering if at this stage I might reach into Tracy and maybe Andrea. Where have you gone, Andrea? There you are. Make a bit of space. So I've got almost one layer down everywhere. I want a bit more of these areas covering. Let's I think I can use some of these larger images. Don't just want it splotted on the middle. I think we'll tuck him under. And what I've noticed with this one, that's not got much capacity, let's go to about there. What I've noticed with this is it works really well with this shade of yellowing book page here. And I want it to feel like there's layers, so I've tucked it underneath this one. I don't want that straight edge, so I'm going to be doing something about that. So as soon as I put something down, I, I get some ideas about what to put down next. Oh yeah can't resist. I think, I think that would work well. Now I remember that I'm not creating, I'm not creating a picture, I'm creating something that I enjoy and I like, but I'm not trying to create an image in its own right as a whole. I want something that I feel I can cut up and I'll get some interesting pieces to use on a journal page. The red on this is really good because I've got a tiny bit of red in my digits here, so I might just carry that through. In fact, I might have that there to break up some of this. I think the key, if there was one tip overall, it would be to try and pull some of your supplies and get them around you because obviously you don't want to be getting up and reaching for things as you're in full flow and it makes it so much easier you can literally pick anything you like you can't really go wrong right, I need some tattiness to go on here it's too tidy To this and a bit of that. That's better. Maybe reach into my bits here. Ooh. Gorgeous. That was kind of born to be there. Go under there. So unders and overs because we didn't add glue all the way to the edge on this page. And I think I just need to be careful that it's not going to be too busy. I think I'll cover up a gap there. Maybe I'll cover that up with some little bit of road map. And it dulls it down. So the other thing I'm thinking as I'm creating is has it got too much going on? And we said neutrals, I wanted to pull a bit of that out. I like that. Covering a bit up. I think I can stick this piece down now. Coming together. This is too sharp a point. I need to get rid. So maybe I'll, I'll, I might do something different with that one. Somehow, once I started, I start to, I start to feel more confident about what I'm doing. So I think I need... A 
something jaggedy. Break that up. And as I'm putting this one down, what my eye is doing is looking down here and thinking there's quite a lot of space there. This would be nice if we chopped up the page, so I think that would work. What I'll do with that is just pat, can it go under? Yes, it's better. Maybe something. Yeah, let's break that up. Tuck that under. Let's break up this expanse. Pull it together. I can't do any pages the same. I can't give precise instructions, and I don't really want to. So we've got an under, an over, I took that under there, that's better, I'm just going to reduce that a little bit, so I can see more of that music. So I've got various layers, oh there's a little bit peeping, I've got, I started with my mat, I think in terms of layers, background anchor piece, background anchor piece was that big piece of brown, and then we started added, adding some bigger pieces, some medium size, and I've I've been adding top layer images. And I think what I will do is take the opportunity now that it's relatively full to just glue a few of the extra pieces down. Then I'm going to have a play at some top level decoration. It's like icing the cake. So I have a few of my favourite toys around me and I think the first thing I'll do is use my stamp here. So this is I believe a Stampers Anonymous stamp and I'm going to get a bit of the detail on. I'll just show you. It's got numbers and script and I just really like the mixture. I love this one and I want that not all over. I'm just going to have that down there and I'm going to take, let's have a look, I'm going to take some of my mica powder and a very soft brush, maybe I'll take that gold one and soften it, just whisper that over there, just add a bit of a gold sheen, it's just something I like to do, and that's plenty, in fact I'll just give it a bit more of a rub. What we get is a bit more visibility of the image that comes from the stamp with a bit of that glorious gold which I like. And I didn't want the image here to be quite so pronounced. I quite like that. That's something interesting. I'm going to use my text. The other thing I'm going to say is you might do things when you're creating a page that you think is not what you intended and the joy of this is you've got another glue book page to have another play with and it is about the process some of this maybe that way up some of my lovely postmark I need to not do too much hurrah I just like the texture and I'm gonna have a little splot with my gold because I feel like it. So with, with these neutrals, let's say they're rich neutrals, luxuriant neutrals. A bit more colour. So this is a gold palette that's getting a lot of use that I believe I have a discount code for. If you check the description box below, it is from Stationery Pal. As I, I've got a few little items from Stationery Pal. They kindly sent me a lovely box and I'm working my way through playing with them so I thought I'd share them with you and this is a really useful item that is getting incorporated into quite a few different projects it's really really rich gold that comes out and I've got a piece of paper there which if I cut and took 
any squares I'd have something interesting going on. So this is my glue book collage page. Using a prompt, I'd like to do this month monthly. I'd love it if you would come along with me and play each month. Let me know if you're up for that. I hope to see you soon.